In this session, uh, we're going to talk about uh, kind of some activities you can do when you initially uh, um, bring up your switch. We've uh, covered how to install, how to find documentation, um, kind of some of the initial configurations you can do to get SSH access to your device. Uh, now we're going to talk about kind of some typical steps that you would take uh, to get this system to be a whole lot more useful and uh, on their way to replacing any legacy uh, networking products that you may uh, have in your in your environment that you're replacing with uh, open networking switches powered by PK8. So one of the first things that you can do, uh, of course, let's just maybe review just a little bit. So we're here in set mode right now. So we're going to do a run show. Oh, we're just going to actually do a show display set and see what we've got configured so we have an ethernet address we have our host name we got an NTP server a DNS server for being able to resolve host names on this switch and uh, we've set our time zone uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, uh, by default this switch does not do any routing and it's not able to be managed um, internally uh, so one of the most useful things that we can do is go ahead and do a set system in band enable true. What that does is it allows uh, SSH access to this switch on any IP address that is configured. Today the only IP address we have configured is the out of band um, IP address and so that does not allow us to do any type of management in band. We actually have, have to have the uh, um, out of band Ethernet port plugged into a switch so that we can access this device. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set uh, IP routing to enabled. What this will allow us to do is run routing protocols. Now setting this does not actually turn on routing. All it does is enable the switch to perform routing functions. You still have to configure the routing functions, which we'll talk about later. And then the last thing that I consider to be a uh, kind of a requirement for any new system is let us turn on LLDP so we can have a great troubleshooting tool at our disposal. Um, it lets us see which switches are connected. Now in my lab, I don't have any other switches that are connected, so we're not going to see a whole lot with that. Now that I've done these three, as you might recall, we're going to need to commit those changes. So commit, and now it will show up in the configuration. All right, so we're not going to see really any change at this point um, because we haven't configured anything else. All right, let's also go and set up some SSH defaults. These are very useful. Uh, so set system services, SSH. We're going to set an idle timeout to 60 minutes. We're also going to, uh, uh, well, we, we could change the SSH protocol by default. Again, um, let's go ahead and just review one thing. So one thing that you will see that you can set, so set some services, SSH, uh, protocol version, and we could set it to V2. But if I type that in, it's going to tell me it's already set. Now, how do I verify that? Here's what we'll do. Go back to our show. And we're going to do a show all display set. And we're going to match on SSH. These are the defaults that are currently set for this system. The only one that we actually added is idle timeout 60. That's the only one that we've changed. All the others are default values. All right. One thing that a lot of other network uh, administrators like to set is go ahead and ensure that any log messages are going to uh, either a SIM or to a syslog server. So we're going to show you how to do that. Set system syslog server IP 10.1.20.1. And we, can, we could specify a source interface. Right now, um, all I have is ETH0, and we can set that. Now, you may be wondering, right, we're looking at this system, and uh, one common thing that a lot of network administrators like to do is um, 
actually look around and, and see what uh, interfaces are there. So we'll just go ahead and show one here. We're going to do run show interface. Now this is, you know, this might look very similar to many of you, and this is not normally the way we like to look at things. So we're going to have, we're going to execute this with the brief command. Now this may look very familiar to you. Here are all the interfaces that we have. Now these are the physical interfaces, not the management. In order to look at the management, show run or run show um, system management, actually, yeah, system management Ethernet. And that shows us the one interface that we have configured. All right, so kind of one of the last things we'll talk about here in the initial administration function is uh, setting up local user accounts. So today uh, we have, okay, so we'll go ahead and set up a new user account using set system login user. And we'll give it a name. We're going to call this one um, uh, Mirage. And we'll give authentication, plain text password, and you will type in a password for that user. Then you can also set that new user. All right, so I'm using the tab button to show everything else that I can type in. Now I have to give it the name of that user. See our two that are there, and uh, operator is a uh, required uh, user. It's utilized um, uh, by the system, so you cannot remove that one. So we have multiple classes that we can specify. One is read only, and the other is super user. Super user uh, can do everything on the switch. Now we'll go ahead and commit that. All right, now the other thing that we can do um, along these same lines is um, we will set the login announcement. And the login announcement is something like, welcome to the jungle, All right? Now when we set that, where do we see that? That is not a message of the day. I'll show you how to do the message of the day in a minute. Under lab here, so you can see I'm logged in at another session here, and so if two people are logged in, you get to see that somebody else is making changes, um, and it shows it to you in the JSON format. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the switch, and then log back in. Now, when I log in, I I don't see that because I actually set up my uh, um, automatic login. Uh, let's log in as a different user. Let me quit this. Okay, we're going to log in as our new user. There we go. So now when I logged in as the new user, you can see that I did see our little welcome message. Um, and so it shows up immediately after you entered a password. In fact, when I logged in earlier as admin, I saw it as well. It just kind of faded in, so I didn't notice it. So many, many network administrators prefer to have um, a message of the day banner. Now that one is a little difficult, more, more, more challenging to do. You actually have to put it in as part of the Linux prompt. So remember how we get to Linux. We do a start shell sh. All right, and we are going to sudo and su. So we are, in essence, running a, uh, a super user session. Then we're going to copy and paste this in. Now, I'm just copying and pasting this from another session. So setting the banner. Um, so what I did is I put in this, so here's the banner I'm doing, string banner, and then this is what we put in, and then we echoed setting the banner, we set the banner, it put it over to this file. It really is just easiest to go ahead and just kind of follow our, um, uh, I guess, uh, our template. 
I would put this information into a text file and then copy and paste it in just like I did. Now I'm going to go, I don't even have to save this because this is part of Linux so it's not going to require that we save it. I'm going to exit out and then log, I'm going to go ahead and do the SSH back in. So you will see the message of the day on the console, um, but you will not see it when you SSH to the box. So over here I'm, I can do SSH and what all you see is the, uh, the welcome to the jungle, which is the little, um, um, I guess, welcome to the system message. So it's just a limitation of SSH in that respect. Um, over here on the con uh, the actual um, console, if I log out, um, I see it each time that the new login window shows up.